I want to welcome you to Dream Chasers Radio with me, your host, Yaya Diamond. What's up, people? How you doing? It is a great day, and I am so excited to have my next guest on the show. He is an author, and he's on Amazon and a bunch of different other places, I'm sure, as well. And we're going to get the chance to actually talk with him about how he got started and the books that he's put out. I've seen two so far, but I may be a miss. We'll be right back. Don't you go anywhere. Welcome back to the show. Okay, so we have Michael Ty. Is it Tryon on the show today? Yeah, yeah Tryon. Oh, Tryon, welcome to the show. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. So tell us about yourself. I was born in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Uh, I was raised in a, a low income family with without running water. Uh, and it was that way until I was 16 years old. Um, in 1969, um, I joined the Navy. I didn't want to go to the Army. Uh, and I actually went into the uh, Navy in uh, January of 1970. Um, I went through trade schools and became a CB. Now, uh, a CB is a part of the Navy that doesn't go on boats or ships, if you want to look at it that way. Um, but anyhow, I had that. I went to that a trade school, and that was for boilers, refrigeration, and uh, some other things like that. Now, uh, in early 1970, I joined a second class diving school in San Diego, California. And there I wound up doing more diving than I did working uh, in, in my trade. Um, and I actually taught uh, scuba diving in San Diego where I was at most of the time. And my last two years uh, was in Bermuda and I was still in the Navy. And I taught scuba diving there. Um, while I was in California, I had a 36-foot Islander sailboat. And I just loved that for about 12 years. Right now, I'm living in Shreveport, Louisiana. And I've gone way down to a 23-foot uh, compact uh, sailboat. So anyhow, there's a, a little bit about me. Um, and let's go from there. Wow. So you live on a sailboat. I don't live on a sailboat anymore. No? Uh, I used to when I was in California. Oh, okay. Okay. How was that? I had a great time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was just fabulous. Uh, <laughs> I, I went from, uh, San Francisco area to San Diego uh, a couple of times. So I had a wonderful time. That that was a long ways to go too. Yeah, it uh, is definitely. Oh, wow. So, anyhow, you got your sea legs um, in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, I had a lot of scary stuff I had to go through because oh. most of the time I was by myself. Mm. Um, and that was almost 400 miles. That's, that's um, That is scary. Yeah, yeah. But anyhow, wow. hey, I, I got through it. Yeah. Uh, now, now I'd like to go to the, to the book if it's okay with you. No problem, no problem. So tell us about the book. Okay, it's a uh, uh, name is Elusive Innocence. And, and that's with the I, not the E. A, okay. a lot of people will want to put elusive. Well, this is elusive. Okay. Okay. Um, Illusive is about unreal, okay? Uh, innocence is the state of freedom from moral wrong. In other words, doesn't make mistakes, doesn't do wrong things, but that's that. Mm -hmm. The book itself starts when a boy, his name is Henry Roten, uh, when he was about 13 years old, that's when everything begins. Um, Henry's father uh, was pretty sick, 
he was actually in World War II and his father is 80% uh, Chippewa Indian. Ooh. That means that Henry is 40% Chippewa Indian. Um, another thing about Henry was, is that for an Indian, he had blonde hair. Now, it happens sometimes, but with him, that's the way it was. And he let his, um, well, his mother wanted mm -hmm. him keep um, letting his uh, uh, hair grow and be very, very long, all the way down to his belt. And it was that way going all the way through school. And that was in 1965, 66, somewhere in there. Uh, nobody wanted a man or a boy to have long hair at, wow. at that particular time. Uh, today, they can, but not back then you couldn't. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, he went through a lot of problems with that. So let's look at some things that he did for fun. Um, he lived on a, uh, in a home that was in a small downtown area. And <clears throat> one of the things that he had the most fun was uh, on the area that is called a mill pond. The mill pond was a, a small river that came in and it uh, wound up having a, uh, a island right in the middle of the pond, uh, but it was something that they didn't use un until it got really cold out, and, and it did in Michigan. But when it got cold and formed ice, then everybody went out um, uh, uh, to this area and they were able to uh, sail or uh, skate around that building. In the summertime, they would wait for the, the rain to rain hard. And then they would go over and uh, there at the mill pond, there was a drain pipe that would allow uh, a certain amount of, of uh, water to be in the mill pond. And if it got more than that, then it drained down this uh, pipe. And this pipe was right on the edge of a uh, pretty good size state um, road along there. And then on, on, uh, that was a, uh, a place where, where they would stop the water and it would go down this pipe and would come out underneath the uh, thing there where, where they were stopping the, the water. And anyhow, to make it really a lot of fun, is they would go and they would jump down that pipe. That pipe was about 12 feet across. It would go down 15 feet mm. and come out the other side. Mm. On, on this side, it was 15 feet deep. On, on the other side of the highway, it was only six feet deep. But you had to make that transition, mm. <laughs> jumping down there. And... Uh, yeah, it was it was a really fun thing to do. Now, there are some things that when I talk about, they're real. And this is one of the real things that occurred um, when I was growing up uh, in that small little town. Wow. But anyhow, uh, had a lot of fun doing that. Um, the, the children love to do it. And... Anyhow, we, uh, oh, I'm trying to find my, the, the area that we used to call that, um, where that pipe allowed the water to go down and, and it had to have a, 
pretty heavy rain uh, before you could do that. Hmm. We called that thunder jumping. Oh, we okay. called it th- we called it thunder jumping because it was really really noisy. Mm-hmm. It it was very noisy. Uh, when it was raining hard, you could hear that letting water get in all over the town. So when students got a chance to jump in that, boy, in the beginning, they were really scared, but they were able to figure it out. So anyhow, uh, that was that one thing that we like to do. And I talked about it a lot uh, in this book. Now, Henry uh, was a, a single person being raised in his family with his mother and his father. His father died uh, in about the third chapter of the book. Mm-hmm. And he, he, uh, he had a lot of problems from World War II. Mm-hmm. But anyhow, he wound up b- being raised by his mother. And that's what he wound up doing uh, in, in that situation. Now, the, the people in town, there were some people that were pretty well off, uh, some people that were really well off. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, there were a lot of them like, like Henry and his family, um, just, just barely had enough to get, get by on. Yeah. Well, um, there was a family called the Cranagers that lived about three blocks down and there was a uh a girl and a boy they were twins and they were in the same uh uh, deal that henry himself were in that they were all in the same classes together there they had another uh sister that was four years older and her her name was um brandy and the the girl by the way was barbie and her brother was bobby so we had those in in the book and there was things that came along and 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 they did things that were pretty crazy but as time went on they their their time went on. They became older and, and doing things. Um, and Henry really loved Barbie. And Barbie just loved Henry. Um, but anyhow, things go on. And let me go over here and we'll just keep going. Um, do you want to ask any any questions? Yeah, I want to know, um, how did you start writing? I mean, how did you know you were going to do this? It's not because I have a good education. Okay. I mean, I did all right. I, I spent uh, uh, three months in college, but then I got in an accident and I hurt my, my leg and the uh, army said, well, we want you to go to Vietnam. Well, <laughs> I did not want to do that. So I had to wait a while. And I went over to the, the Navy. And my my uncle uh, was in the Navy. And so I joined the Navy and said, if I join you guys, I don't have to go to Vietnam, right? And they said, oh, no, 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 no. The Navy does not go to Vietnam, at least not very many of them. This is kind of a uh, I can't go into too much on this because mm. my 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 son is uh, very uh, well. He doesn't want everybody to know what he's been through in his life. I got you. So so I'm trying to stay away from that. But what what happened is he had a lot of problems uh, medically, and. I really felt bad about that. I mean, I, I really had a hard time with it. And I went and I, I talked to a psychiatrist for about, I don't know, eight or nine times. And on the eighth or ninth time, she told me, she said, there's nothing wrong with you. 
you just have too much time on your hands. Oh. Well, I can't say that because <laughs> I worked eight hours a day. Right. Plus, I worked five hours a night uh, teaching uh, young boys. Yes, the boys that are already out of out of school, mm-hmm. and and I, I taught them my trade. Uh, five o'clock in the evening, four nights a week. Okay, mm-hmm. so I was busy all the time. I mean, on my own work, I, I was working for the Bear Corporation, like like Bear Aspirin. I, I worked for them for 25 years. Oh, wow. And I, I put in eight hours a day and some overtime sometimes on 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 weekends. Mm-hmm. But uh, anyhow, the psychiatrist told me, she said, doesn't matter how much you're working or how hard you're working, you've got too much time on your hands. <laughs> and I said, how can you how possibly can say that? Exactly. And she says, here's what you need to do. Write about something. I mean, write a book. And I told her, I says, I'm not that educated. (laughs) And she says, it doesn't matter. Go Mm. do it. So I went out and I started writing this book. Mm. And I spent probably... 12 years doing that wow. until I got it to the point where I could publish it. Mm-hmm. Wow. And I, I got your, your, where I can see you now. Hey. Hey, how about <laughs> that? <laughs> um, so anyhow, I got a phone call coming in too, but I'm just going to ig- ignore that. Okay. Then how the, the, that's how this happened is, um, uh, I I wrote this book and then I had the book published and oops this meeting is being recorded by the host are you still there I'm still here oh okay well something mm-hmm. something I thought maybe I I I I lost your your um uh, picture but th- that's okay I can hear you I'm still here so, so <laughs> um uh over time, I realized that I wasn't doing too good when it came to uh, how my book was published. And my publisher, a lot of them told me, you got to do better. You got to do better. You got to do better. So over time, I, I went out and I got uh, some help uh, on my computer. And then I got um, probably the, the, the biggest thing to help me more than anything else was Grammarly. And I got the, eventually I, I got the professional uh, mm-hmm. view of that particular one. And, and that helped a lot now. And I'm actually going through and, and um, closing off this is my last edit that I'm going to do on on this book. Now, can you can you see this? I don't know if you can or not. Yes. Yeah. Well, this is my book, Elusive Innocence. And anyhow, uh, I'm going to flip it over here. There's me. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yes, I can. Okay. So uh, the picture that you're seeing here is a picture of Barbie, actually. Um, and Barbie, Barbie, who's Barbie? Barbie. She's she's the girl that was the twin. Oh, of, okay. Of, of, of the family. Okay, that that lived three blocks away. But um, uh, anyhow. That's that's who that is. She doesn't exist. This is this is all fiction, you know. I understand. <laughs> Except some things. Now, um, I I get to talk about 
when all the guys got together, there was like uh, six or seven of us. Mm. And we had about a foot of snow. And it was it was uh, uh, spring um, where, where you was able to have a couple weeks off. And in, in Michigan, it was because of the snow, you could take a couple of weeks off. And this was usually the, the first two weeks in uh, March. And we decided we're going to take our guns and our tents and everything, and we're going to go out here and we're, we're going to just live like crazy, right? Uh, in the deep snow. Well, <laughs> we were out there real good. It was real nice. It got to be 65 degrees. All, all the snow. Mm. It, it all turned into mud. Yes, it does. <laughs> we we had a a uh, uh, um, a a thing that that we used to catch water in when we when we were going places like that. And it was uh, a a milk uh, jug, jug or a, a, a milk uh, uh, thing. Well, there there goes my brain. But you you, you could put about probably uh, maybe ten gallons of of milk in it. Well, mm -hmm. we didn't do that. We had water in it. Well, okay. we used all the water up, and we were out in no man's land. And we had to go get some more water. But now we were in mud that was almost a foot deep. And we couldn't get there. So me and Bobby, that's Barbie's brother, we took it out to the river, which we were right on the edge of the river where we were camping. And we got water that was on the top of the ice. Because the ice, the ice on on the the uh, river didn't all go away; mm -hmm. it, it stayed ice. So the water on top of it, we thought, well, that's really good water. <laughs> so we filled it up and went back, and it kind of had a little bit of a smell to it. So we had a whole bunch of uh, stuff where we could had Kool Aid. And, and we made a whole big jug of Kool-Aid, and everybody loved it. Well, we still stayed there, even though it was bad. Two nights later, everybody was getting sick. Mm. And really, really bad sick. <laughs> mm. And it got so sick. Now, we actually did this once again. Okay? Oh, uh and we really did this. I had my brother with us. I loved him dearly. He had, I don't know, three or four different kinds of really, really bad sickness. Mm. He couldn't have kids. Oh, no. He wanted to kill me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> when he found out that we made up that Kool-Aid from bad water, oh man, it was anyhow. Um he didn't realize that until many years later. Because I never told him. <laughs> and and I really didn't understand it. But after I understood it, then I didn't want him to know about it. Uh, now he knows about it. <laughs> anyhow oh, man. he had one he had one girl it wasn't his girl it was his wife going off on him going to somebody else and that's how well anyhow i don't want to go into that too much mm -hmm. but you know you do crazy things like that yeah and, uh, that's that's what happens so how much time do we have? Uh, about five minutes. Okay. All right. Um, so Henry, he he really wanted to uh, marry Barbie. But 
Barbie was going to college. He was going to college. Brandy was going to college. They were going to different places all across America. Um, and anyhow, uh, Brandy married the doctor. The doctor used to beat on her. I mean, really bad. And she finally told her family about it. Uh, they took her away from that. And anyhow, uh, Brandy had some some real bad problems, you know, in her brain. And Henry wound up going up. Now she was almost four years older than than uh, Hank than uh, Henry. And uh, Brandy called him Hank instead of Henry. They got married. <sighs> and that was towards the end of the, the book. But uh, there were some other things that happened that people would probably want to know. I don't want to tell everybody everything because. Then, of course not. They need to get you the know, book. You're, you're, you're not going to get the book. So there, exactly. there, there's a lot that, that I'm not telling you about. Mm. But now uh, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, it really is a, a very good book. Um, people that read it now, my, my older brother is a year older than me and he and I don't get along at all, but he got this book and he says, Mike, I love you now. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, really? <laughs> anyhow, uh, there you go. Wow. Wow. So, that, wow. Well, don't be making no more Kool-Aid from Batwater, okay? <laughs> no, no, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you so much, Mr. Tryon, for being on the show. Well, thank you for having me. I, I had a really good time. Now, I've got two more books that are coming up. Uh -oh. it, it's going to be another six months before I'm ready. Okay, to, not a problem. Well, to, you have to come to back be, now. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Wow. It was nice talking to you. And you too. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. We're going to have the link to Mr. Tryon's book in the description box below. And uh, to, just to make sure that I am saying this right, because he said it's not with an E, it's with an I, Elusive Innocence. And you can get that on Amazon. I'm a, Again, it'll be in the description box below for you guys to go ahead and, and grab that. So it'll be easy for you to go ahead and go over there and check that out for yourselves. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget to dare to be different. And until next time, guys, bye. Thank you so much for stopping by. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Hit that notification bell so you'll be notified the next time that I upload. And don't forget to dare to be different. Until next time, guys. I dare to be different. I dare to be different. I dare to be different.